Tony Gaudí wanted to invite people to look up, to be near God. He wanted to create a church of light. Gaudí is one of the world's most renowned architects. His works are recognizable for their unique blend of architectural styles, deeply inspired by nature. In the 1880s, he took over designing a grand basilica in Barcelona, La Sagrada Familia. It would become his most famous project, not least because it's still under construction more than 140 years on from when work first began. We've been given rare behind-the-scenes access to find out how technology is playing a key role in completing this astonishing feat of architecture. It's still a construction site up here at the moment, but you can get some of the most incredible views of Barcelona from up here. Gaudí's predecessor had drawn up blueprints for a much more traditional-looking basilica, but when Gaudí took over, he tore up the rule book. His design featured soaring towers, inclined columns that branch out like trees, and 300 skylights. He was a visionary who was ahead of his time. He had built this familiar using the technique of his moment. He knew the project in the future could be built with new technologies. Gaudí knew he wouldn't be able to complete such a monumental project in his lifetime. So he had to make sure future architects would be able to understand his designs once he was gone. And for that, he relied on the principles of geometry. Gaudi was using what it's called ruled surfaces, which are made of straight lines. And just by changing the endpoints of those strings, changes the curvature of this surface. The skylights are hyperbolic. It's a circle, the skylight, and a huge number of state lines that surround the entrance of light. And this form diffuses perfectly the sound and the light. And these shapes can be seen all over the basilica. Because they are made of straight lines, these rules can be followed easily. These shapes, are they quite unique to La Sagrada Familia? Being applied in that massive scale, it was the first time in history. As well as drawings, Gaudi used three-dimensional Plaster of Paris models to communicate his complex geometrical vision. These are some pediments of this building, these pieces in here. But many of his models were smashed up during the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s. The generations after him had to reconstruct this 3D puzzle. We have more than 8,000 pieces being scanned. With this information in the computer, we can recreate the same geometry. These 3D printers are constantly churning out different versions of models based on Gaudi's originals. They're used to experiment with the design before a single stone is placed as part of the construction. We're looking at a full model of the central towers. It's incredible that this is 3D printed. How long would that take? Because it's a very big model. In this case, this will take some weeks. The towers just look so tall and thin. How does a structure like that stay standing? This is how Gaudi worked it out. He experimented with this hanging chain model over the course of many years. Each weight represents a column in the basilica. They've created perfect arches in the chains, which would be able to support themselves under their own weight if they were flipped upside down. But there were forces it couldn't take into account, wind and earthquakes. So today, structural engineers have been brought in to help make the basilica even more resilient. We have built very complex models which represent the stiffness of the structure and then we have applied different ground motions to these models to determine its performance under seismic events. We've also done similar things with wind loads where we have applied wind loads to it and we see how they perform to make sure we've got the most optimal design. But that wasn't the only challenge to overcome. 
The existing foundations were built to bear a much smaller version of the basilica. They wouldn't have been strong enough to support towers at the height Gaudí drew up in his final designs if they were made of traditionally thick, heavy walls. But thin walls wouldn't be able to support themselves on their own. So engineers at Arup came up with a new solution, inspired by one of these simple toys. How these structures work is when you squeeze the bottom, they fall over because there is no tension in the cables. But when the cables are taut, they are stable. What we have come up with is post-tension stone panels. So these panels are made of solid stone and they have steel cables that which run between them. And by tensioning them together, we're able to make a solid panel, which is much, much thinner than it would be if it was built out of traditional stone. Visitors flock from around the world to admire the basilica. But some local residents say ongoing construction has been disruptive. Today's architects and engineers are still working to continue Gaudí's great project. And thanks to advancements in technology, this generation could be the one to complete it. Next year, we'll be able to build the cross on Jesus Tower. And once that cross is placed, La Sagrada Familia will become the tallest church in the world.